All right, Larry Kruger here at Levi's Stadium for the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er update from this Wednesday as we were down here in Santa Clara for practice. Kyle Shanahan and some of the key players spoke to the media, and we'll talk all about it right here. And, of course, check out Pig and a Pickle. Two locations, Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week in both spots from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Get the brisket, get the brisket chili, go say to Damon and Mary. Tell them that Krug sent you. And this video is also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Use the promo code Krug, K-R-U-E-G, and they will match you up to your first $100. Well, Kyle Shanahan took the podium today, and uh, immediately I asked him about Debo Samuel's uh, shoulder. He said he's not gonna practice today. Um, and he, all he would say is the shoulder hurts. It's not fractured. It could be a partial dislocation, though I don't believe so. It could be a rotator cuff issue. He, the shoulder's in a lot of pain. Um, and, you know, he said Debo isn't going to practice today, and, and obviously we'll have to just see where it goes from here. Uh, Debo was out on the practice field uh, just running around, so that's a good sign. Uh, Brandon Ayuk was asked about it later in the, in the uh, media session and said that personally he thinks Debo – is going to wind up playing Sunday against the Detroit Lions. A couple other things that came out. Kyle talked a little bit about Detroit on defense and said that, you know, yeah, he understands that they've got some, you know, some issues at certain spots and some of the numbers don't look particularly impressive on their defense, but that they're really good at creating negative plays and getting you behind the sticks. Um, it's also a very physical defense. It's a very tough defense. Aiden Hutchinson, of course, has got eight sacks in the last four games. So they have to deal with Hutchinson up front and then guys like Brian Branch and C.J. Gardner-Johnson on the back end. So they do create a number of negative plays. They mix their coverages, and it will be a significant significant challenge. He was asked about uh, Demo Lenore, and he just described him as a bulldog and loves the way that Lenore is playing. Um, he mentioned how Detroit's defense is leading – the NFL and turnovers created in the last four or five games and that the negative plays that they create are really the key to their to their defensive effort. Uh, I asked him about Brock's rhythm against Green Bay and what he thought about you know his lack of rhythm early on and he said it was just a number of things from missed assignments to you know other other challenges in the game to the weather to the wetness of the ball um, but he said he wouldn't put it all on Brock, that obviously he circled the wagons in that fourth quarter, came up came up with some really good plays, and really didn't want to point to Brock as much as he wanted to spread the blame around. Um, he mentioned, you know, as far as Detroit's defense, the one thing that they'll do is that one of their consistent traits or two of their consistent traits is that, um, you know, they, they will attack and they will consistently be aggressive. So he also mentioned that he felt like a lot of the issues that the Ford Niners had last week offensively were created by Green Bay's defense. Interestingly enough, Green Bay today fired Joe Barry, their defensive coordinator. So obviously Green Bay didn't feel – Green Bay's uh, head coach or, or general manager didn't feel the same uh, belief that Green Bay defensively was outstanding, but Shanahan seemed to point to that – he felt like Green Bay overall caused a lot of the issues that the 49ers had defensively last week. Then Brock Purdy took to the podium, and um, he, he was asked, you know, what can you do to kind of turn it around after a kind of a rough one last week? And he said, hey, man, you got to learn from your mistakes, and you got to build off of the good things that you did, and you got to watch the film, and you got to correct it. I asked him, you know, how did you, you know, what – what did you see in your own performance last week? How would you critique yourself? And then I thought he came, gave me a really good answer. He said that he felt like he made some bad decisions early on, including the ball that Savage almost took back for a pick six, and that those bad decisions then made him a little tentative the rest of the way. Um, and, you know, he, he, he said that, you know, he needs to – be more comfortable when they take away the, the look that he wants to go to, to go to take the checkdowns more when they present themselves um, and then have confidence in the checkdowns. And when somebody, I think Mike Silver might have followed up and he said that he didn't feel like he got to the checkdowns fast enough against Green Bay. 
So ultimately, it sounds like, you know, maybe the the picks, the near pick six by Darnell Savage on one of Brock's early throws may have thrown him off a little bit and may have thrown off his rhythm a little bit and may have made him a little tentative. And, you know, he's told me many times in the past, you can't play scared. So I thought that was an interesting kind of introspection from Brock. Um, he was asked about, you know, last year to this year and how he would compare the whole thing. And he said, man, I'm healthy now. Uh, but obviously there's a, you know, the Niners badly want to win this game and go to the Super Bowl. Um, and obviously last year and the feeling they had last year is something that fuels them. He was asked about Detroit's cornerbacks, and he just described them. He says they're going to be very aggressive. They're going to mix their coverages, and they're going to be aggressive. Um, he, asked, he was asked about what are the keys for the offense in this game. He's like, put up points, don't turn it over, and try to, you know, to, to, you know swing the momentum as much as you possibly can in the 49ers' favor. Um, he was asked about Debo and whether or not he thinks Debo is going to play. And he just described Debo as the best playmaker in the league. And he mentioned that Debo gives the Niners offense some juice. And then I asked him before he was done about Ray Ray McLeod. There was a ball this in this last game where Ray Ray cut outside uh, trying to make a big play. Um, I think the route was designed for him to go inside. And you saw Greasy on the sidelines jumping up and down, and you saw Brock saying, what are you doing? And I asked Brock about it, and he said, hey, you know, I was just going through my progressions, and the cornerback had slipped down, and Ray Ray put up his hand and ran to the open space, and, and he had to explain to Ray Ray afterwards that, man, you really in this, in this if, he's gonna, if Brock's going to throw, you know, make those anticipation throws, you got to be where you're supposed to be. And um, he said it wasn't personal. He said he's got nothing against Ray Ray. Uh, it was just just a miscommunication. Uh, he says he's got nothing but love for Ray Ray. They talked it out on the sidelines. So there's no feud or anything ongoing or lasting there. Um, but he did have some harsh words for Ray Ray for missing that assignment. And, you know, um, and basically Brock just, you know, said the bottom line on the whole thing is, you know, you got to be where you got to be. You know, you got to be where he expects you to be. And if you're not, um, you know, he's going to shout that out. So that's what happened there with Ray Ray. And you saw them explain it on the sidelines. And you've seen people talking about it over the last 24 hours. Then Nick Bosa took the podium. And he been, I asked him about going up against Taylor Decker and Panay Sewell. And he said, you know, he studied Taylor Decker since he practiced against his brother, Joey Bosa, when they were both Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, so he's got a lot of experience watching Decker. He also said that Panay Sewell is, you know, an outstanding run blocker. And, you know, he obviously that's going to be a huge challenge going against those Detroit tackles. He was asked about Jared Goff, and he said the real key for Jared Goff is to you know, take away his first reads and cover his first reads, um, get pressure on him. And obviously, you know, Nick knows they got a really good offensive line, but he said, you know, you got to take away his first read. Um, he was asked about the Niner run defense, and he mentioned that he's like, we got hit on those crack tosses against uh, Green Bay. And he's like, we're going to get those, those halfback toss plays this week as well. So it's been a point of emphasis this week. Uh, they got to have better run fits on the crack toss. Simple as that. Or it's going to be a long day against Montgomery and Gibbs. Um, he said, you know, he was asked about the fact the Niners got no sacks. And he's like, I'm tired of answering this question. He's like, it's, it's, just, it's as important as, a, you know, affecting the quarterback is as important as sacking the quarterback. Um, he mentioned that Green Bay kept chip kept chipping him and Chase Young all day long, and they never really went around, away from their chip protections. So they really almost gave these guys, the defense ends, kind of almost double teams uh, throughout the game. And then he was asked about Chase Young, and he said, you know, is it, I think Matt Mayoko said, is Chase Young's breakout game coming? And Bosa said, man, he has the ability. And then he went on to say, we're going to need it. Um, and then he mentioned, hey, look, you know, when the line slides towards me or Hargrave or Armstead and Chase has got one-on-ones, you've got to win when you've got a one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, I think that's, I mean, it's not like he was harsh from Bosa, but he knows the reality, which is the Niners going to the Super Bowl, the D-line's got to do their job. If the D-line's going to do their job, that means Chase Young has got to get to the quarterback at some point. And um, there's no question he's got talent, but they're going to need him to produce big plays on Sunday against the Lions. And then 
Post also talked about, you know, how he really wasn't happy with some of the run fits in that Aaron Jones fourth quarter long run um, and just said they got out of position and it can't happen. And so obviously, you know, defending the halfback toss is going to be a major, major part of their practice practice schedule this week as they get ready for Montgomery and Gibbs. Then Fred Warner took the stage and he talked was asked about Juwan Jennings and he described Juwan Jennings as one of the best players on our team. Um, just a very, a very complete player. He says he plays the game the way you're supposed to play the game. Uh, he was asked about Juwan blocking the Green Bay defender into the Gatorade. About Goff, he was asked what stood out. He said, man, it's his decisiveness that really stood out. He was asked about Amon Ra, and he said, man, this is a guy who clearly plays the game with a chip on his shoulder. Um, and, you know, obviously he's a key point of emphasis this week as well, stopping him. Um, he talked about stopping Detroit's run game and, and mentioned that they have the best O-line in the National Football League and that they can hit hit you inside uh, or outside and that the Niners have to be prepared. Um, he was asked about, do the Niners have an experience advantage against Detroit? He said he didn't really think the experience advantage was an advantage, but he thought the major advantage was playing at Levi's, playing at home in front of the Niners faithful. I asked him about Sam Laporta, and Laporta's been a really good rookie, and he said all of their rookies play like veterans. And he said what stands, about, stands out about Laporta is just how he's such a savvy route runner, and he can separate from defenders when the ball's in the air. Um, and then, and then he, you know, he was asked about you know playing this NFC top Championship game and being in this spot again, and he just said, "Hey, if we play well, we, you know, we we think we're going to win." Um, so there's a lot of confidence coming from Fred. Then Brandon Ayuk took to the stage, and um, uh, you know, he said he he was asked about Detroit's cornerbacks who have given up a lot of yards, and he just said that the Niner receivers are excited for this opportunity. Uh, he mentioned that. Detroit's defensive backs really play hard and they play together. Um, as I said before, he was asked about if Debo's going to go, and he said, I do personally believe he'll go. Um, and then they said, well, what if J what if Debo can't go? Will, will you step into his role? And and Brandon mentions that mentioned that Debo plays the, the Z wide receiver spot and that the backup Z is either going to be J.J., Juwan, Juwan um, or um, Chris Conley. Conley plays... The uh, uh, Jennings and Conley play the Z, and Ray Ray plays the flanker, and um, Ayuk plays the X. So if Debo can't go, it won't be necessarily Ayuk in his spot. It will be JJ or Conley in Debo's spot. But either way, he understands that you know, like if Debo doesn't play, he's going to have to step up with an extra special effort. He was asked about Demo Lenore, and he just said, "Man, he's guys guys really coming on as a player." He was asked about the people criticizing Brock Purdy. And he said, we're all here because of him. Um, and, and he said, you know, one word that would describe Brock is steady. And he said, he's just a football player. Then, he, then somebody asked, how does Brock make you better? And he said, you know, his timing and his anticipation, and he gets the ball to us on time. And he said, that's how he makes me better. Um, and then the last one was, you know, just some of the notes from today. CMC um, has been named the Offensive Player of the Year by the Pro Football Writers Association of America. Um, Detroit, by the way, has allowed 345-plus passing yards in five straight games, including two of those games were against Nick Mullins. So the Niners should have opportunities in this game to throw the ball down the field. The 49ers also today opened the practice window for Kalia Davis, so they'll see if Kalia Davis can help out. I watched him at practice. He looked really, really good. Maybe he can help them out in the middle a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, Debo Samuel was there in a jersey. He worked out on a side field um, at the beginning of practice. Says the shoulder is feeling better. Uh, by the way, Cleet Blakeman will ref the NFC Championship game. He's in his 14th season. He's been controversial in the past, um, but it's all, also a crew made up of all-star officials. And Blakeman's crew, though, this year averaged 11 penalties per game. So that's kind of a lot. So you may see some flags in this game. Dan Campbell and his presser today in Detroit says Detroit's number one objective is to stop the 49ers run game. And, um, and then Colin Coward also weighed in on this matchup, saying that without Debo Samuel, Samuel, the 49ers are the equivalent of the Raiders, and that if Debo can't go, in his mind, Detroit's going to win Sunday at Levi's. And then um, 
you know, as far as the 49ers, I mean, I think one thing that's clear is that Detroit's pass defense is is the area of weakness that the Niners are going to attack. Detroit is 16th in pass defense DVOA. Um, they play a lot of zone, which helps them stop the run and has helped them stop the run. But you may see shallow crossers and intermediate crossers open for the 49er receivers in this game um, against this Lions pass, de- pass defense. So... It's going to, to me, I think one of the key areas to watch for in this game is who owns the middle of the field. Kittle, Ayuk, Debo, these guys, JJ, they all own the middle of the field. They don't tiptoe across the middle of the field. They run those routes with conviction. Well, Kirby Joseph is a headhunter and a, and a big hitter, and you could say the exact same thing about C.J. Gardner-Johnson. So who owns the middle in the middle of the field when the Niners are out there offensively could determine who wins this game. All right, thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show. Thanks to Underdog Fantasy as well for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.